Okay, it looks like most people have jumped online, so I will kick off today's webinar. Thank you everyone for joining us for the latest in Creditor Watch webinars. Today we'll be looking at working from home, um, how to keep yourself and your business, your employees engaged. It's look, it's something that we probably wanted to run a couple of weeks ago. However, with all of the insolvency changes and being inundated with questions around PPSR and security and whatnot, um, we, we pushed this back a couple of weeks. However, all it's done is given us a little bit more um, content to draw upon, a bit more experience from the last um, four weeks. So this is week five for Creditor Watch working from home. So we're gonna share plenty of um, stories of what we've experienced, all very positive. Um, I'd like to thank my team especially, I know plenty of them listening, um, for doing the right thing and really getting on board and knuckling down. So it's been great to see. I, for one, have um, have always been a bit of a cynic when it comes to uh, working from home. So we'll, we'll always allow people to work from home if they've got, you know, a delivery or a doctor's appointment, you know, near their house or, you know, extenuating circumstances, um, they need to look after the kids, et cetera. However, it's certainly not something that's ever been a regular part of our, our culture. Um, and, and to be honest, culture is a big reason for that. I think it's it's quite difficult to build a culture from if you've got a working from home um, set up in your business. Um, but this whole horrible Corona COVID situation, um, you know, has forced most businesses into a work from home scenario. And it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a good way to sort of force yourself to, to test it out and also be in a position to, to be set up to be able to handle it in the future. So we were able to do it within about 24 hours, which is really exciting. So a little bit about Creditor Watch. Most of you will, uh, will know who we are, what we do. Australia's leading and most innovative credit reporting bureau in Australia um, with over 50,000 customers. We've got a, a suite of products um, that I've listed here. Um, feel free to click on all of all or any of the links to get a little bit more information about them. We will, of course, be sending out the webinar slides and recording in the next couple of days. Um, if you do have any questions, you know, specifically around things that can assist you in the, the current circumstances, um, don't hesitate to contact us. Plenty of details on the website or reach out to your account manager. Um, those last sort of three things that you see down the bottom probably the most relevant um, for those of you who are just using Creditor Watch from a reporting and monitoring point of view. There's plenty of other tools there to assist with the current circumstances and to help you through it. But today, let's um, have a look at how working from home has obviously changed most people's um, businesses, most employees' daily routine. Um, and we're gonna check out some tips and advice that we've come up with ourselves, ones that we've obviously pinched from elsewhere and um, talk about how it works, what we should be looking at from an employee point of view, from a manager point of view, from a business point of view. We're, uh, we're fortunate um, enough to have, you know, a wide range of customers and prospects and subscribers that, that, that utilize Creditor Watch, regardless of whether it's for their, for our products and services or, or just for content on the blog and updates like this via webinar. Um, different sizes means there's different, you know, skill sets, different requirements, different challenges that we all face. You know, we've got small business owners who are operating out of their second bedroom or garage. You know, they, they might be solo operator, they might be, you know, a two person, two, two man band, so to speak. Um, they're gonna have different, different challenges, different experiences to people who are working in large corporate organizations managing teams you know bigger than some of the small businesses that, that might be signing into credit watch today so i've tried to give a fairly good spread of information regardless of the size of your business the role in the business um, whether you've got a team or not all of this should be really malleable and and, and really relevant to anyone um, who is in a work from home scenario or trying to manage people in a work from home scenario so welcome to the new normal. When Credit Watch rolled out, um, or when I presented to the to the company that we'd be moving to a work from home scenario, it was a Monday about lunchtime, and and essentially I told everyone 
from Tuesday morning, you'd be working from home. So it was it was fairly quick. I think most people appreciated that it was coming. We were probably, you know, week two, week three, after companies had started to roll out um, working from home setups. So most people in the business understood that it was coming eventually. Um, and I, I have always spoken from that day about the new normal and it's about getting there as a, as a business, as an individual, and hopefully getting your customers and your suppliers there as quickly as possible. And we're really starting to feel that the new normal kicked in, you know, in the last two weeks where our sales team, our customer support team, our developers, et cetera, when they're speaking to, to prospects or customers or suppliers, there is, there is no real talk about, oh, we are working from home and, and that's a challenge or we're still settling in or, um, you know, we don't know how long this is going to be. It, it seems that most people nowadays are settled into um, the work from home scenario and that is the new normal, which is really important from a, I think from an economic and commercial standpoint. We actually saw a bit of an uptick last week in, in searches, in new business, um, people coming to the website and we've seen that continue this week. So that's really positive from a, a, trade, a trade credit point of view. Um, it's certainly still going to get harder from here, I think, over the next couple of months. Um, but it's uh, it's definitely a positive when you look at it that way from people doing business and also you compare it to the fact that we certainly are, have flattened the curve um, from an infection point uh, standpoint. Um, so all of that combined, you know, hopefully helps the government find this road out of, uh, of lockdown or hibernation that they keep talking about. So that's what I talk about. That's what I mean when I talk about the new normal. So looking at you know pre pre COVID pre Corona um, technologies obviously played a huge role in um, the explosion of you know of, of business in general, but also the ability to communicate, to collaborate, to work together with other people right across your business across the world, regardless of what. Um, regardless of what you know, time zone that you're in, for example. It's also given people the ability to start to work from home um, in a much easier um, and transparent way. So some of the numbers here, in the US alone, 5 million employees currently work at home. This is pre-COVID. Um, and that number has grown 400% since 2010 when we're talking about at least one person working from home on a regular basis. So it is becoming it is sorry. It isn't becoming. It is. It is something that is not. It's not necessarily new. Um, it is um, something that has been around for quite a while and is becoming more and more normal. Particularly when you look at you know technology companies, large corporates, etc., who um, like to give that flexibility and is a draw card when they're hiring and when you're hiring you know thousands of people. It's something that you need in order to differentiate differentiate yourself from competitors from time to time. So I won't say post-COVID because we're certainly still still in the grips of it, but COVID, um, corona times, you know, what, what are we seeing and, and what to expect in the future? As I said, we're starting to see this become the new normal. People are getting on with work, those that obviously can, those that haven't been um, drastically affected, you know, like plenty of businesses unfortunately have out there. Um, and I think as we transition away from this and you know over the sort of 6, 12, 18 months, we will certainly see that working from home will be a lot more popular than it was prior to this um, coronavirus period. We're certainly hearing plenty of businesses that we talk to on a daily basis talking about the fact that it's a great opportunity. It's presented them with a great opportunity to, to, to prove that it can be done for the business. Employees are proving to um, their employers that they can do it, they can be trusted. Um, it's an opportunity for you know people to sometimes be more productive um, and you've just got that flexibi flexibility to offer people the ability to work from home. Um, what will be interesting is how you know commercial landlords go about this. Um, will we see the office change from you know having the same size office but more sort of uh, social breakout areas because they don't need as many desks or will we see companies um, reduce their, their floor space because they know that they're only ever going to have 80% occupancy 
within their office with people working from home. That'll be a, a certainly an interesting one that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for over the next you know, couple of years. So let's look at some, some common working from home problems. Now there's obvious ones and there's, there's less obvious ones. There's ones that are spoken about a lot. There's ones that are you know, certainly concerns of mine prior to this and, and going into it. Um, and you know, they're not all in here, but these are the sort of ones that certainly jumped out and ones that we're working um, to, to fix or to avoid, so to speak, and identify. So working too much, you get people who can't switch off um, first thing they do is wake up in the morning, not necessarily getting ready. They're just jumping straight onto their computer and working at all hours, working at night, etc. Definitely a problem. And I say that as a, as a manager and as a leader within a business, that's not what you want people doing. It's not um, a long-term um, option. Not working enough, obviously a big one that jumps out very difficult sometimes, depending on you know various roles to track how much work people are actually doing. There's interruptions. Um, I've got a my wife at home. We've got an 18 month old and a three and a half year old. Um, you know, whenever I talk about interruptions, my mind always goes to that BBC interview where the kid dances into the room, and then the the smaller one, probably both similar age to my kids. And then I believe it's the mum comes in and sort of rips them out of the room as uh, as the the father is mid interview with the BBC. If you haven't seen it, I'll uh, I'll make sure that it is included in the slides. Lack of motivation, you know, regardless of whether you've got people in the house with you, housemates, wife, you know, husband, kids, or you're living at home, a lack of motivation is certainly very very important to identify. It's certainly a problem that comes up very regularly. Feeling isolated, lonely, definitely something um, that we've been wanting to keep um, on top of as much as possible. Um, and it links in with number eight down there, the second part of that mental health, which I'll talk about in a little bit more detail. Communications issues. So not just, you know, I'm not talking about technology challenges where their email or phone or something like that isn't working. I'm talking about the fact that I'm used to having multiple people walk up to me all at all times of the day and communicate with me. I'm able to hear salespeople on the on the calls. I'm able to see my developers, you know, if they're all relaxed and working away, that's great. If they're all looking around one another with their eyes wide open, it means that something's probably broken or something's not working. Um, you miss you miss that when you're working from home. If you're sitting in a room on your own, you don't know what's going on. I've got 70 odd employees around Australia. It's very difficult to keep on top of everything that is happening. Um, so you've got to really rely on um, the ability to communicate and keep everyone in touch with one another. Technology challenges, fairly obvious. Physical health, it's really easy to sit on the couch in between, you know, um, your, your efforts of working, it's easy to, to get into a, a lazy routine, a bad routine from a physical standpoint, generally not walking around, not talking to people, et cetera, et cetera. Even those little things, walking out to get lunch, getting active is really important. Um, mental health is a big one. And I, I genuinely feel that this has been quite overlooked since, um, you know, since everyone around the world, most people around the world started transitioning to a work from home situation. Um, it's extremely important. It is very quiet. Um, it is not spoken about enough. Um, and I, I can't talk enough to it to, to encourage people to speak up as much as possible for people to reach out on a regular basis, ask those open ended questions, ask probing questions, um, send documentation through, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got a few slides that I talk about later on on that. And of course, the last one here is culture. Um, you know, we're very fortunate at Creditor Watch. We have built an incredible culture from day one when there were only three of us. Um, high energy, fun place to work, um, winning mentality. Everyone gets along. You know, it's 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 in my mind impossible to build that if you're all working from home on a on an almost full time basis. So, how do you how do you fix that? How do you maintain that? I don't think you, to be honest, could do it if we had to work from home forever. Um, but there's certainly plenty of 
um, solutions out there in the interim until we're able to get everyone back into the office. So identifying and avoiding these problems. So these, these are majority of these things we are, we have implemented um, either before, you know, before Corona, before working from home came about, um, or as a result of moving everyone to a work from home setup. So regular meetings, both formal and informal. So we, every team at Creditor Watch will have a daily huddle. Um, there are one-on-ones happening almost every week, I would say across all of my teams. Um, and then you will have team and department meetings as well, almost on a daily basis. Plus we've got um, at the moment four all company catch-ups a week. Now it might sound like overkill. Some of them go for 12 minutes exactly. We start at 8.48, for example, on table one in the Sydney office. And I've got there's eight, about eight of us, um, 8.48, we've got 12 minutes to basically get through um, uh, what we're doing for the day and, and that sort of thing. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit a little bit later. Even the all company ones, Monday morning, we do a, a, a creditor watch update, which is me talking for generally a couple of minutes max. Sometimes it's a little bit longer if we've got some, you know, some good results that have come through or it's end of month, that sort of thing. Um, but really it's a quick check in, make sure people can, you know, get engaged, can, can check in, can ask questions, um, get updates with what's happening, get online. It's a really good way to get a routine going. Routine is extremely important. Technology, obviously, um, you know, everyone's heard about Zoom and, and most people have heard about Slack and um, Teams, Microsoft Teams and, you know, WhatsApp. There's no shortage of, of um, technology available out there to keep people collaborating and communicating. Really important. But again, really important to have a mix of formal and informal it can't all be about work. You want people to be able to, to switch off, to send you know memes and gifts and whatnot to one another so they can get a little lighthearted break from being you know in the thick of it with work. I think the other thing is really important is tracking and promoting productivity. So obviously from a you know from a dev from a development pers perspective, we've got um, the ability to see you know what people are doing, how much they're doing, you know are they hitting their milestones on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly basis um, on top of the general catch-ups and, 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 and team meetings. That's really important from a sales perspective. You know, we've got a fairly, well, we've got a great idea of how many, you know, calls, meetings, deals needs to be made on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Um, so being able to track that, being able to promote it, being able to create a bit of a competitive, you know, um, a competitive spirit, a bit of competition, between individuals, between teams, etc., is really important. Again, that covers a number of the problems that we spoke about in terms of um, communication, being out of the loop, culture, but also performance as well. Setting and monitoring those performance metrics. It's all good to have them, but you want to be on top of them as well. You want to keep an eye on them and you want to be addressing them as soon as possible if you see any sort of dip, a check-in, um, etc. Employee surveys, we do, we've always done two of these, three of these a year, two, two at the moment. Um, and we're currently actually just looking into some um, technology that we can use from Qualtrics. Um, we're fortunate that one of our, one of our previous employees who moved over there, shot me an email the other day. Plenty of you would know Charlie, Charles Kinsella, thank you. Um, Qualtrics have got um, the ability to sort of track employee health engagement, that sort of thing. So we're just looking at rolling that out just to get a sense of how people are feeling. People, you know, plenty of people out there don't like to talk about it, um, regardless of how many times you ask or who asks them. So sometimes they prefer the anonymity of, um, you know, filling out a form or, or a you know multiple choice sort of scorecard, for example. And then the other thing is constant encouragement for people to check in. Everyone's got their friends at, at the office. Um, it's really important that you don't just check in with the people that you're generally you know, chatting to, but also you wanna be checking in with people that you may not necessarily 
speak to on a daily basis, but you would say hello to them in the kitchen if you saw them. So there's no difference to checking in with those people every now and again. It's a different conversation for both of you compared to what you're not you're used to normally having with uh, with those that you're close to. Um, my my wife's actually a, a social worker, studied psychology, so I asked her for a, for some um, for some tips. You know, looking more at the obviously the mental health side of things um, when it comes to you know working from home. Plus the fact that you know Corona is uh, the coronavirus is 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 quite a scary thing. You know, if you think about what's happening around the world, not just in in your in your suburb or in your state and your country. Um, it is it is quite a scary thing. So forget the working from home loneliness. Um, there are plenty of people out there who are genuinely um, concerned, scared of um, you know what is happening, what is going on out there. So I asked her for her for her input, and this is and this is what she's um, what she's come back to me. I've obviously made some adjustments to it um, from a webinar perspective, but uh, yeah, what she, what she's provided is is uh, is really nice. I asked her to join to join me today, but she uh, she passed on it, um, which is probably a good thing because otherwise you'd hear two screaming children in the background at the same time. So you, we probably wouldn't get much out of her, unfortunately. So the first one there, engage, be mindful of what you watch and how much media you ingest. It should inform rather than overwhelm. Um, and of course, use trusted sources rather than relying on um, you know posts and, and, and photos that have been put up on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram and that sort of thing. Control, so it's really important that you focus on what you can control, you can exercise, you can wash your hands, you can eat healthy, all right? There's plenty out there that you cannot control and you have to let go and release that. You need to, as best as possible, try not to worry about it. Easier said than done, but if you focus on what you can control, that'll make a big difference to you, all right? Because you'll be less concerned about what you can't control. Connect and connect regularly with family, friends, colleagues. Use any platform, all platforms. Um, you know, I, I would imagine most people have received an invite to to join a Zoom meeting after hours. Um, I did that with friends all around the world the other day, which was a lot of fun. All these house party invites that keep coming through, um, along with you know all of the social sort of media networks and just picking up the phone and calling someone as well. Social connections can genuinely really improve your mood. It's a very good way to escape what you um, what you might be what you might be going through. It's also a great way to sort of stimulate your brain activity as well. Self nurture, so engage in activities that lift your mood. Daily mindfulness techniques. Um, you know, plenty of apps out there, mindfulness apps out there that you can use around meditation and and um, and, and and relaxation. And then of course, exercise. And exercise can be as simple as a 15 or 20 minute walk to the shops and back, better than sitting down, um, doing nothing and getting lost in your own thoughts. So you wanna get those endorphins released. Um, even some stretching is a really nice way to relax, whether it's first thing in the morning, last thing at night or you know, middle of the day, it doesn't really matter. Having a nice stretch is a great way to switch off. Accept and distract. Some days are better than others. It's really important that you acknowledge this. Um, I've certainly had good days um, working from home and I've had plenty of shit days as well. Um, so being able to acknowledge this is really important. Um, and then having to think about or talking to people about what will help improve that day, that mood for you. And of course, the last one is really, really important. Ask for help or support, go out and seek it. Don't sit back and wait for it to get better. Go out there, get help. So put a link in here, meditation for beginners. Um, it's a nice, fun video that you can watch. Talks about, obviously, benefits of, uh, uh, we've got mediation in this last word, but it's meditation, um, 10 minutes a day. Look, I, I, will, I will do it for sort of three minutes, um, sort of person who struggles to sort of sit still for that long. Um, and that, that for me is a, is a great way to sort of reset, but I would encourage you to jump on YouTube once we send this out or just search for it. Headspace do a lot of fantastic um, content, apps, et cetera, for you to take advantage of, for you to share around with your team, with your company, 
really important to get that information out. Um, we we try to send something out on a weekly fortnightly basis um, and our, our HR manager sent something the other day and the response back was really um, unexpected. Heaps of people were hanging out for, you know, for a little bit of information, check in, you know, just some, some tips post long weekend that was really helpful. So it was something that sort of I underestimated. So it was really good to get that feedback from the staff that they were they were really happy to receive that and, and there were certainly benefits there. So getting things out, even if it's just a small link to um, you know, a, a YouTube video like this can make a big difference. It can get, get people, you know, stimulate their thinking and, and they might go looking for other things if, if, if they feel they need it. So looking at making the most of working from home, now I would assume that most people are, you know, probably two, three, four, five, six weeks into working from home. Um, and I think people go through waves. You have your, you know, your first week or two where you've got your routine, you know what you're going to do. Hopefully you're settled in fairly quickly. Maybe you didn't, maybe it was the opposite. Couldn't get into a routine and, and, and you know, the wave came sort of three or four weeks in. Routine is extremely important. Now it doesn't have to be um, a militant routine that you keep to the to the minute to the to the hour, but you should have a fairly set routine that starts in the morning. You know, we set stuff out very early on. Simple things like do the normal thing you would do in the morning: get up, if you exercise, go and exercise. If you don't, if you sleep in, and you're one of those people who takes you know their time in the morning and then rushes to work, well then. Do that, take your time in the morning, have your shower, eat your breakfast, brush your teeth, do all of those things. There's nothing worse than sort of sitting around in your pyjamas and realising, you know, it's 11.30, ready for an early lunch potentially or, you know, you haven't even had breakfast yet and you still haven't brushed your hair and you haven't brushed your teeth, that sort of thing. It's not a positive way to be operating regardless of, of your role, regardless of what it is that you're doing, regardless of whether you've got a team or not. So be disciplined. Set goals for yourself through the day um, that you want to achieve. You know, you might be a developer, you might be on the phones, you might be in sales, you might be in marketing, you might be in you know, manufacturing, it doesn't matter. You can set goals that you can strive to achieve on a daily basis. Have a dedicated workspace. It's really important that you can separate work from home. Take breaks. Easy to get up, go for a walk, get outside. We're fortunate. Well, I'm in Sydney. We've been so fortunate. The weather's been absolutely incredible the last sort of four weeks. Um, take advantage of that sun. Vitamin D is great for you. Write it down so it's front of mind. That could be your routine, that could be what you want to achieve for the day, that could be um, you know, something that you want to achieve for the month, a, you know, a goal that's further off towards the horizon. Write it down so you don't forget about it and so it's front of mind at all times. As a leader, manager, senior employee, anything um, that sort of fits into that, <clears throat> into that mould, a couple of tips here, lead by example, be calm and considered at all times, be really positive. It's probably something else that I should have put in there, regardless of what is going on within the business, within your life, within the lives of others. Calm, considered and positive. Be empathetic, be caring. Um, really important that you reward and offer recognition. I, I probably um, am guilty of not, not offering enough Recognition, I'd like to think I'm very good from a rewards perspective, but recognition is not something that I take for granted, but I underestimate the, the power of recognition um, when people achieve things big or small. Be available always. So as often as possible, as a leader, as a manager, senior employee, you should be available to, regardless of whether they're direct reports or not, people for them to be able to contact you on you know, Slack, email, text, phone, etc. It's really great. Gives people an outlet, gives people the ability to, to feel like, okay, if something isn't quite working, I do have someone I can speak to. I can reach out to them and I know that they're going to be available for me. And I think the other flip side is always asking for feedback from people. Am I doing the right thing? Do you need anything else? Are there tools that you know that we can get that's going to help you work from from home, 
Um, is your desk set up the right way there? Are you sitting on the floor? You're working in bed, et cetera, and that sort of thing. So ask for, for feedback and listen, really listen carefully. So a little bit around motivation engagement, obviously um, acknowledge the situation has changed and adapt expectations, um, goal setting and progress monitoring for your direct reports, for your company, employees, et cetera. Recognition, again, constant feedback loop. This is a big thing for me at Creditor Watch. We've got a really, really good, healthy feedback loop, which is, um, is, is not the same from a work from home setup versus being in the office, but you know we get our customers or prospects deliver feedback to sales and sales support. That often will come through to management and dev and then back around. So having that constant communication between all parties involved in any sort of you know deal, product, transaction, um, just general customer feedback, extremely important that you are um, providing um, the ability for people to to send that information around and through despite the fact that we're not all sitting together and able to just yell it to one another or walk up to the other person and say it. From an informal perspective, encourage learning and self-development. There's heaps of tools out there that people in their downtime, they don't have that usual hour to hour commute um, that they're used to on a daily basis. It's a great opportunity for them to learn something, read books, um, engage in self-development. Always have your company culture in mind with everything that you're doing and make sure people are switching off from work, whether it's on the weekend, at night, lunchtime, beforehand, etc. All right. So what is Creditor Watch doing through all of this? We've had, we've had heaps of feedback through our social channels um, from customers who hear what we're doing, from people seeing it online. Um, I even had friends uh, text me the other day because they'd heard about it through another through another friend of a friend. Um, you know, what is it the Credit Watch is doing? It seems to be working, um, which is great. And I can say, yes, it certainly is working. We're doing doing well at Credit Watch, which is which is fantastic, and everyone seems engaged and happy. Um, so I've, I've got a, a few things. I've got some pictures to show. So every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m., we do what's called Work It with Credit Watch. So a different employee, every um, every session takes a 15 minute session. Sometimes it's, you know, boxing and, and kicking with um, our resident UFC fighter, Jess. Um, we've had um, yoga, Pilates, HIIT workouts, and then just a general stretch that I took. Um, I wasn't feeling lazy, but I felt the body was sore and I just thought, you know, I love a good stretch in the morning. So I took them through. Um, a little stretching session. Joe, our CTO, Joe's Kitchen, Thursdays, we try to do something in the afternoon. Um, so he took us through a cooking class, um, made spaghetti carbonara. He couldn't stop saying it. He's Italian. He says it much better than me, um, which was a fantastic way for people to engage. We had, I think we had, what do we got? We had 30 odd people signed in for it, which was great listening in, asking questions. It was an opportunity also to just speak to Joe and ask him questions. His, um, his little girl wasn't running around, so we were asking where she was, how she's going with the whole, you know, having mum and dad at home and, and that sort of thing. So it was a great way to get to know Joe a little bit better, particularly for people who don't work in his team. Um, another Thursday, we had what's called Thirsty Thursdays, which is just a Zoom channel open for, I think it was about an hour, two hours, people could, join in, have a beer, have a listen, have a laugh. We had music going, um, which was really exciting. Um, and we even had, you can see there, plenty of little kids um, being brought into the show. We created an Instagram account for employees only, private one, old pictures, old videos, daily updates. Um, employees can send photos and videos in and they get shared around. Plenty of laughs generally at my expense, which is really nice. Um, a great, a great idea that came through um, from one of the employees at Creditor Watch, which was fantastic and uh, got a pretty good following. I think what have we got there? 29 out of 70. I, that's pretty happy with that. So far, the feedback's been good, and uh, there's always something to to have a look at on the daily basis. 
We, Natalie, our digital content manager, started a um, employee interview and what she's done, that was pre-COVID, which was, which was great. Good opportunity to, to meet various employees at Credit Watch, but um, recently she did one around our team, or my team, I should say, my table, table one in Sydney. So as you can see, we do a daily Zoom meeting and that was the one in the picture here. Um, she interviewed each of us around, you know, the pros and cons and what's working, what's not working, et cetera, in terms of working from home. So little things like that get everyone engaged. They get not just our employees, obviously jumping onto the website to have a read and learn about, you know, what else other people are doing, but also allow our, uh, our customers to engage with us as well, which is nice. So some of the other things that we've got here, a whole list that, that you can utilise and adapt. The third one there, Cocktails with Coglin. Um, so I'll be doing that tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday, tomorrow afternoon. Um, I'll send out some recipes. So hopefully some other people will make some cocktails with me. Um, and it's a good opportunity for, for all staff to fire questions at me um, along the way as we're waiting for the cocktails to be made and or drank. Um, we had a best working from home setup. So we had about, I think, eight, eight or nine people put their hand up to show off their, their home office, a live demo via Zoom. And then the whole company voted the coolest home office won a prize. I spoke about the, uh, the regular check-ins and the importance of those. So most teams will have a morning check-in that goes for, you know, I think there's a 12 minute um, timeline set up for it or time frame set up for it. it. Probably goes for only five or six minutes. Just talk about what you're grateful for or what's your positive for the day. It could be that you exercise, you had a good coffee, you had a good sleep, and then you talk about what's the most important thing. And that's sort of similar to our daily huddle that we've always had at Creditor Watch. Um, what's the most important thing you're working on? What's your daily goal? And also, do you have any sort of roadblocks or hurdles that are stopping you from doing your job? So it's a great way to keep that communication going. Slack channels, of course, got the whole company and then individual teams, employees, etc. There's even a couple of other channels. People want to jump into, it says mediation, that's my fault, meditation channel. Um, Zoom background design competition will be coming up, get to know the team, I've touched on. Um, and then the last one here, really important, um, not always, not something that every business can roll out, but something I would certainly recommend if you, if you can, um, access to an employee assistance program, EAP, gives your employees the ability, um, employees and I think family, the ability to call um, a, a hotline for free, it's covered by the company, um, and they can talk to a, a social worker, a psychologist, for example, about anything that, that might be troubling them and it doesn't have to be you know, work related. It could be, um, it could be that they're you know, suffering from anxiety, depression. Um, it could be that things aren't going well at home, struggling with the kids, struggling with their partner, whatever it is, they just need to, they wanna to talk to someone. It's a great easy way for them to do it completely anonymously. So I don't see, no one within Creditor Watch can see who's made the calls. Um, it's all um, completely confidential and private. It's a fantastic way for your staff to be able to um, call and speak to a professional that can help them, hopefully on the phone or over a couple of sessions, and if need be, um, get them in touch with, um, you know, with any other rele re uh, relevant, you know, authorities or, or doctors, et cetera, if, if it needs to be escalated to that point. So if you haven't heard about an EAP, um, I would certainly recommend that you do have a look um, because it is a extremely beneficial uh, uh, beneficial option to have within your business. And that takes me to the end today. I hope that um, you got out of this what I intended for people to get out of it and what you hope to get out of it as well. Um, again, there's a wide plenty of wide ranging subjects topics, tools, features, etc., that I that I could go on all day about. Um, I hope it wasn't too basic. Um, as I said, if you can learn, if you can learn one thing, if you can take one thing away and it was beneficial, um, you know, that's that's what I'm aiming for. So I really appreciate your time today. Um, if you have asked questions, we will get back to you in time. Um, however, we've obviously run out a bit of time here. It usually goes for half an hour. So I appreciate that, but we will get back to you in time. Thank you everyone for joining us.